So we've been looking at some of the properties of limits, and for these first four properties, we looked at how do you actually establish these using the formal definition of the limit. Um, these are the only ones where we're going to try to give an argument in favor of them, but we can continue on and we can look at some others. Now, first of all, this one is valid for differences as well as sums. The proof is similar if you did want to try to do it. You can also do this for quotients. and products. Okay. So again, if f of x has limit l, g of x has limit m, then the limit as x goes to c of f of x times g of x is L times M, okay? So limit of a product, product of the limits. Um, this rule is often used in conjunction with, with this first rule here, um, and it's sort of a variation on part C, right? If you have the limit of a constant times a function, the result is gonna be that constant times the limit of the function. And, and the way that a lot of people will kind of think about this is if you had the the limit of, say, a, a constant times f of x, um, rather than writing in terms of this limit l, uh, where a lot of people think of it as, well, you can pull the constant out. So you could write this as k times the limit as x goes to c of f of x, right? Um, much as you could think of doing it here, right? If you bring the constant out front, then you've just got the limit of x, which was equal to c from part b, okay? Um, Similarly, a lot of people will, will write these by saying the limit of f plus g is the limit of f plus the limit of g, right? The limit of f times g is the limit of f times the limit of g, and so on. Okay, uh, one more, um, quotients. Okay, so if I have f of x over g of x, well, that result is going to be L over M. But of course, I need the restriction that M is not equal to zero, right? Um, and by the way, implicit in all of these, it's sort of stated, um, it's just we maybe we're not driving the point home, is that all the limits have to exist for any of these rules to apply, okay? Uh, the last one, is powers and roots. Well, you can think of the uh, rule for powers as just sort of a repeated application of the product rule. So the limit as x goes to c of f of x to the n will be l to the n for integer powers. And the limit as x goes to c of the nth root of f of x is equal to the nth root of L. Um, that last one, you've got to be a little bit careful, of course. If you're dealing with an even root, then, well, of course, the limit has to be non-negative for, uh, for that square root to even be defined. Uh, but you have to be even a little bit more careful than that because you have to make sure that the square root of f of x is defined, right, near c in order to be able to take that limit. So you actually need to make sure that f of x is positive on some interval containing c, or at least non-negative on some interval containing c. Then you can apply that rule if you're dealing with an even root. Okay, so these are the main algebraic properties of limits. The only one that we don't have down on the board is, is a property dealing with composition. You'll find that one in the textbook as well. Um, now, the composition rule is a little bit trickier, and in fact, um, some people might say that the composition rule is better left until you discuss continuity, because if you, if you go look at the definition of continuity, come back, reread that property that is written down for composition, you'll find that um, 
the composition rule is, is really saying that you know, when you're doing the limit as x approaches c of, say, f of g of x, um, more or less what the composition rule says is, well, you can bring the limit inside, but you need to know something about f. You need to know that f is continuous. If you know what it means for a function to be continuous and you've established that this function f is continuous, um, then you can bring the limit in and you can write it as f of the limit of g. Um, but you need this continuity assumption to make that one work. Otherwise, you can get yourself into trouble. Um, so you do need to be a little bit careful with limits of compositions.